How do you do? Teddy Roosevelt once said, Comparison is the thief of joy. If that's true, the man in the following story spent an entire childhood being robbed. He was always compared unfavorably with his brother, so he rebelled, and his life was a series of failures. Then, one Father's Day, he became an obedient son when he found a brother who loved him, and his heart and mind and life were unshackled. Bruce was called out of his classroom again today to talk some sense into Will. Oh, uh, what was he doing this time? Playing pranks on the girls. What is wrong with that boy? I think he's just slow learning. He's not slow. He's rebellious. I wish Will was more like his brother. Well, we can talk to him again, see if it does any good. Never has. Where is he? Out back, I think. Hey, hey. What? Oh, yeah. What in the world? What is it? It's Will. He's setting fire to newspapers and throwing him down in sewer. William! Wait till I get my hands on him. Call the fire department! This is Unshackled. Dramatizing true life stories produced in Chicago by Pacific Garden Mission. Hopeless. That's what many people say about the homeless. And that's often how they feel. They come to Pacific Garden Mission hungry, tired, and dejected, where they are fed, offered showers and fresh clothing, and given a safe place to sleep. For more than 140 years, the old lighthouse has been keeping the porch light on for those who are lost in the darkness. Mission pastors and counselors speaking the truth in love share the good news that can change any life, any time. The one who makes that promise also says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Now for broadcast around the earth, here is episode number 3,511 in the series, Unshackled, the program that makes you face yourself and think. I was born on the east side of Baltimore in 1942, a premature baby so small I fit into a cigar box. I was the middle son of three boys, with one brother 11 months older and one brother 14 years younger. So I was the baby of the family for a long time but I was never coddled. I was cross-eyed and wore glasses, so all the kids laughed at me, which made me act up even more. In the fourth grade, the teacher slapped me for not paying attention. Ow! So I slapped her back. <gasps> I was expelled for a while over that. School was hard for me, and I failed the first and fourth grades. Meanwhile, my brother excelled in, well, everything. He was a hard act to follow. I finally made it to junior high when I was 15, and the first year was a disaster. 76. <laughs> I got a 76? No. 76 unsatisfactory remarks on your report card. William. What? Are you trying for some kind of record? <sighs> I'm not learning nothing I want to hear. Yeah, well, here it is. You better turn it around. You can do better than that. School's a waste of time. Your brother doesn't think so. He's learning a lot. And it shows. Yeah, he's amazing. Thanks, Dad, for once again pointing that out. Yeah, he's well-liked. And his friends are all wonderful. They are. They're polite and level-headed, which is more than I can say for your friends. My friends are cool. Your friends are hoodlums, like you. Like me? Why can't you be more like your brother? Why can't you be more like your brother? See? See, you're just a rebel, Will. I worked at being a rebel, from the way I grew my hair to the fights I started. I fell in with a street gang that drank and partied every night, stealing things to buy booze. Then came marijuana and speed. While my brother flourished in high school, I was flunking and repeating the eighth grade. In 1959, I finally made it out of junior high and went to vocational school to study commercial art. I messed that up, too. A gun? In class? A lot of guys carry a piece, Mom, okay? I just got caught. No, it's not okay. 
And the school certainly doesn't think it's okay. A twenty-five is no big deal. It's a small gun. It, it has is no... a big deal, Will. To us, to the school, and the police. They said you either quit school or be put into the Maryland Training School for Boys. Oh, no way! I'm going there. I'll quit school. And what are you going to do? I don't know. Well, you better do something. I'll be or... a plumber. Oh, you're just going to be a plumber, just like that. I can learn. <sighs> Why don't you join the Air Force like your brother? Because I am not my brother, and I never will be or want to be. My life began to take on the narrative of the prodigal son. I was now in the rebellion and ruin phase. I ended up working as a plumber's helper until 1961, when I joined the Maryland National Guard. They sent me to South Carolina for six months of training, where I squandered my life in decadence and drugs. With a couple of buddies, I got drunk and stole an army jeep. And of course, there were consequences. Private Pasco, you are now charged with an Article 15 and permanent KP. Once back in Baltimore, I was put on inactive duty. Meanwhile, I married a 16-year-old neighborhood girl and finally went to work as a plumber. Even after we had two beautiful children, my squandering wasn't over. Please. Open up. A nine-year-old metro. Yeah. Has a new lease on we had a complaint from neighbors, disturbing the peace. They ought to mind their own business. It's quiet. You hear anything? Yeah. Where's your wife? In the other room. We want to see your wife. Tell her to come out. Honey, the police want to see you. Oh my goodness! Did you do that to her? Did you do that to her? We were arguing. Oh, so you beat her up? Nice. Do you want to press charges, ma'am? <laughs> See, she doesn't. Now will you leave us alone? Maybe she doesn't want to press charges, but you're coming with us, Pasco. For what? Domestic violence. Your wife could really give you some jail time, buddy. My ruination continued in the 1970s. To end the violence in our marriage, my wife and I split. In exchange for a large settlement, she gave me custody of the kids when we divorced. I was in no shape to raise them, so I put our son and daughter in a Christian home for children. Then I went through an agonizing affair with a woman for five years. That was a disaster too. I'm glad you finally quit drinking, Will. It wasn't easy, but I did it for her, Mom. Thought she'd marry me, but <laughs> she had other ideas. No chance of getting back together? Nah. I was trying to make it work. Rented a house for us. Thought I could bring my kids home and we'd all live together. She wasn't open to that. She was running around with her ex-boyfriend. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. Maybe it's all for the best. <laughs> I've made a mess of my life, Mom. Well, you're still young. The kids are growing up so fast. Thirteen and fourteen already, and I'm still not fit to raise them. Why don't you get some help? Counseling or something. I think I'm beyond help. In 1977, I began getting psychiatric care at the VA hospital. I was in awful shape, drug addicted and volatile. I couldn't break free. Addiction is the only prison where the locks are on the inside. My son wanted to stay in the Christian home, but my 15-year-old daughter wanted to live with me. So I got a cheap apartment and worked a plumbing job while she went to school. That was 1979, the same year I met Mary Fawn, who ran a jewelry shop down the street. It's nice to meet you, Will. Your daughter told me a lot about you. Uh oh. <laughs> it was good. <laughs> Well, she's told me a lot about you too. Practically begged me to come meet you. She started living with you this year. Yeah, she and her brother were in a Christian home because I couldn't take care of them.、Mm, well, I grew up in a foster home too. Maybe that's why she and I hit it off. Maybe so.、Uh, she said you're Indian. Cherokee. Huh? That bother you? No, not at all. Well, it does some people. Well, they're stupid. You're right, <laughs> but sometimes it's hard to take. The same people probably don't like Italians either, so don't worry about it. I don't worry. I'm four foot eleven, and I'm going to heaven. 
Well, before you do, would you go out with me? <laughs> Seven months later, Mary and I were married. She had beautiful, sad eyes and long black hair, and so much compassion for others. How I loved her. We called each other Lupe, which means sweetheart, but love and marriage didn't change me. The prodigal son was not ready to come home yet. One weekend, I bought some pot and rolled 21 joints and started smoking. Three hours later, I had taken myself to a new level of high. But drugs take you to hell, disguised as heaven. <coughs> Lupe, why are you doing that? <coughs> I like it. Plus, I deserve it. I worked hard this week. How many joints does that make? Uh, this is the last one, I promise. You're setting a bad example for your daughter. You're right. You are very wise, Lupe. Oh, and all these drugs can't be good for you. You sound worried. I am worried. I pray for you all the time that God would protect you. Where are you going? To protect you. Hey, world! Oh. <laughs> Don't even think no. about hurting my Lupe. Oh, oh, oh no, no, oh. no, get back here. Uh, what is wrong? Uh, <coughs> I'll fight anybody out no. here that oh, thinks no. they... Uh, <gasps> ah. No! He's coming around now. The shot's working. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Will, you scared me so much. I called the paramedics. You could have died from smoking all that pot. You better listen to your wife, buddy. You overdid it. Here. Drink this coffee. You smoked a whole ounce of pot in three hours. Yeah, uh, I guess I did. You trying to kill yourself? I don't think so. You'd better get into a drug rehab program. Lupe, ask God to help you. He can. He wants to. Hmm. You need all the help you can get. And we still have to file a police report. Oh, please don't do that. Just give us a chance. God will help him change. I'll quit, Mary. I promise. They didn't file a police report, and I kept my promise for a while. But whenever we had an argument, I'd use that moment as justification to go buy drugs. It was my way of getting back at her, and it gave me an excuse to use. Mary must have known because she learned to avoid conflict. She continued to pray, and even, on occasion, read Bible verses to me. We made it through some lean years when I was laid off. In 1985, we moved into the home of a family friend, becoming caretakers for this elderly woman and her new husband. After a few months, we knew something was not right. Well, you know, I don't have a good feeling about the man your friend married. I don't either. She's a wealthy woman, yet we had to go out and buy food when we moved in here. The cupboards were bare. I know. It doesn't add up. I think his family is stealing from her. I think you're right, Mary. He's after her money, but what can we do? Keep our eyes open, Lupe. We didn't keep our eyes open enough. A few months later, we were charged with stealing some rare and valuable coins which were missing from the house. Coins that we didn't even know existed. We went to jail. In a moment, we'll learn the outcome of their predicament. Here's the president of Pacific Garden Mission, Phil Kwiatkowski. Thanks, Timothy. Go to our website, unshackled.org, and you can take a virtual tour of our home. Pacific Garden Mission is the oldest continuously operating rescue mission in the country. And Unshackled is the longest-running radio drama in history. You can listen online in real time to any one of hundreds of these dramas, many in Spanish. Tell your friends when and how to visit our website so they can listen too. That's unshackled.org. You can also submit a prayer request, learn how to get to heaven, order story booklets or CDs of these dramas. You can even submit your story or the name of another person to us for consideration as an Unshackled production. For more information, write to Pacific Garden Mission, 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. Our email address is unshackled at pgm.org. Please include your address.
Hello, Will. You doing okay? As good as expected. How's Mary? Your uncle put up his house to post bail, so she's out of jail now. Thank God. Nine days must have seemed like forever to her. She's coming to live with me till this is over. I don't know what I'd do without you, Mom. I just can't believe all of this is happening. We can't either. We knew nothing about any coins. Then why were you accused? To get us out of the way, I guess. We knew this guy was planning to wipe out our bank accounts, and he wanted to get rid of us. Oh, Will. Can you prove it? No, and they can't prove we're thieves. The coins are just missing. This has all been very hard on Mary. Son, she's gone to the doctor. What's wrong? She may have cancer. Cancer and imprisonment. We wondered where God was in all of this. Our day in court finally came. And because my record was good, the judge sentenced me to eight months in the Baltimore City Jail. Plus, I had to pay $24,000 in restitution when I was released. While I was serving my term in jail, Mary had a mastectomy for breast cancer. That was the worst time in our lives. Mary? <gasps> you're back. <laughs> oh, Will, you're back. Oh, Lupe. Those were the longest months of my life. It's been a nightmare. I thought it would never end. Do you have a lot of pain? Yes. It, it, it's, it's hard to move my arm yet. But mostly, I'm just angry at what happened. It was so unjust. I know. At least we still have each other, Lupe. Yeah. But I wonder if I'll ever feel happy again. All my life, I feel like I've been fighting against injustice. It isn't fair, Will. I never hurt anyone. <laughs> there, there, Lupe. I know. <laughs> Don't cry. Somehow we'll get through this. Mary had to be hospitalized for depression. She was in and out of hospitals for three years battling depression. In 1990, she got separate calls from a long-lost brother and sister. This blows my mind. After all these years, suddenly I have a family. Where have they been? Why contact me now? What'd they say? Well, my sister said there were five children and I was the baby. Two of us were given up for adoption. The rest stayed together. And she said my real parents died years ago from alcoholism, and my foster parents just died, so that's why it's all coming out in the open. Would you like to go and see her? Yes. In the summer, we went to visit her sister in Hillsboro, North Carolina. Mary was so confused after we left that she ended up back in the hospital when we came home. She was hungry for knowledge about her past but troubled by what she had learned. In December, she left with her brother for another trip into her past. She was gone three months when I got laid off from work. I was desperately looking for another job so I could bring her back to Baltimore. Hey, Will, you need a ride? Nah, I'm good. Thanks anyway. Tom? Yeah, hey man, how you doing? Come on, hop in! <laughs> you don't even look like yourself. <laughs> yeah, I know. Hey. I'm clean now. Wow. How'd you do it? Well, Drug rehab? <laughs> more like heart rehab. God changed my heart. I'm a Christian now. No kidding. My wife always talks about Jesus. Oh. She's having a rough time right now, though. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, man. Christians are not promised a problem-free life. But I do know Jesus is the answer to every problem. I gave my life to him last year, and my whole world changed. Yeah? <laughs> Maybe that's what I need. Nothing seems to go right. Well, all you have to do is ask. He wants a relationship with you. Now that I know him, it blows my mind to think of all the years I wasted. That good, huh? Yeah. Well, imagine the most beautiful, most expensive Christmas gift you've ever seen. And it has your name on it. But you don't open it up, so you don't know what it is. Huh. Doesn't do you much good. <laughs> Salvation is a gift from God, Will. All you have to do is receive it and believe. John chapter 1, verse 12 says... But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. I went to church with Tom, 
And on Father's Day in 1991, salvation's truth hit me between the eyes. I saw that Jesus died on the cross for my sins, and I asked him into my life. I had gone from rebellion to ruin to restoration. The prodigal son had come home. I couldn't wait to tell Mary. Right away, I traveled down to Hillsboro, where she was a patient in the nursing home where her sister worked. I've, I've missed you so much. I love you, Lupe. Now more than ever. I gave my life to Christ. Oh, Lupe, that's the best news I could hear. I was afraid I wouldn't live to see the day. Don't talk like that. You're coming back to Baltimore with me. Will, my cancer has come back. I'm getting chemotherapy. We'll fight this, Mary. I'm learning that all things are possible with God. I always said I'm four foot eleven and I'm going to heaven. <laughs> Soon I'll be with Jesus. I want you to live, Lupe. I'll pray with you, read the Bible with you. I'll do whatever it takes for us to be together. I took a job as a maintenance man in the nursing home to be near Mary. I watched her become gaunt, losing 50 pounds. I felt terrible anguish when I was alone, but every day after work I spent with her. For two months we talked and laughed together, ate and read the Bible. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> and remember when I smoked all that pot and passed out? Oh, how, how could I forget? That scared me so much. <laughs> You used to tell me not to defile my body with drugs and, mm -hmm. and then read me that, that one verse in a loud voice. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which, which ye, ye have, have of God, God and, and ye are, are not your, your own? own. <laughs> <laughs> well, Satan had me so blinded then. I couldn't understand. Oh, well, I'm so glad you received Christ. We'll share eternity together now. I hope we can be together in Baltimore first. The boss wants me to come back. There's a lot of work right now, and maybe mm -hmm. I can earn enough to, to get a nice apartment for you. Lupe, will you bury me in Baltimore in your family plot? Don't talk like that. I, I want you to find another woman to love. Stop. I want you to. Just make sure she loves the Lord. I don't want any wife but you. Don't you understand? God just gave me to you for a little while. He has other plans for you. Mary, I don't... Shh, it's okay, honey. My death will be swallowed up in victory. I went back to work in Baltimore and then set about trying to transfer Mary to a nursing home nearby, but time was running out. I talked with her many times on the phone, and each time her voice seemed weaker. I prayed constantly for her, and so did my church. Hello? Tom? Mm -hmm. The nursing home just called and asked me to please come quickly. Mary's heart is slowing and even stopped once. Oh, when are you leaving? On the bus tomorrow. Please pray for us. I'll call the pastor and we'll ask others to pray too. I want so much to bring her back with me. Oh, I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do. I'm so sorry you and Mary are going through this. It's all in the Lord's hands now, Will. I know. We love you, buddy. When I got to the hospital, Mary was on oxygen in the intensive care unit. I told her I loved her and that I came to take her back to Baltimore with me. For two weeks, I slept in the waiting room. Then, on September 12th, a nurse woke me up at 6.30. I ran to Mary's bedside where five doctors were desperately trying to save her life as she lay gasping. I think he's dropping. He's dropping. Mary, don't leave me. Lupe, don't let go. Jesus, Lord, touch her. Let her breathe. If you want to take her, Lord, take her now. Don't let her suffer. Mary died that morning. I finally brought my Lupe back to Baltimore with me where she was buried in my family plot. Tom and my pastor, Pastor Geigen, would help me through this difficult time in my life. I would learn that grief felt much like fear, 
the pit in the stomach, the restlessness. Still, I worked and went to church and prayed that God would take away the pain of losing her. How you doing, Will? The Lord is helping me day by day to live without my Mary. Mm. Isn't he a blessed Savior? Always there when you need him. I feel his comfort. In the old days, I, I would have escaped into drugs. Not anymore. Good. Hey, would you like to visit some of the homeless shelters with me? Your testimony would mean a lot to some of those hurting people, and it would help you forget yourself. I'd love to. That's the kind of thing Mary would have done, too. <laughs> she was always helping someone else, even when she was sick. God has really changed you, Will. <laughs> you don't know the half of it, man. I was dead, and now I feel alive. I was a shell of a man, lost, but now I'm found. Found and free. It's now been almost 25 years since my dear Lupe passed on to be with the Lord, and I still miss her every day. I've lived for the Lord now for close to three decades. When I think back on my early years, the heartache, the feelings of hopelessness, the bondage to sin, I can't help but feel gratitude that God revealed his truth to me and plucked me out of all that mess. In fact, a verse comes to mind, John 8.32, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Jesus really did set me free. Listening friend, Jesus Christ can set you free too. Whatever the sin that has you bound, whatever the depth of despair, there is no one that he cannot save. He came to set the captives free, and his death on the cross purchased your salvation. All you have to do is believe it and ask him to save you. 